Hi, welcome to HowToStats.com. In this presentation, I'm going to talk about standard error of measurement. I'm going to explain what it is, and then I'm going to go through an example. So here's an outline of the presentation. I'm going to ask what is it and give an answer. What is its purpose? How is it estimated? How is it applied? And final considerations. So a standard error of measurement, SEM, what is it? It's a standard deviation of errors of measurement that are associated with test scores. Now, I have test in quotation marks because, really, the standard error of measurement can be applied to any instrument that produces scores. This could be instruments used by a medical doctor, a mechanic, an automotive mechanic, or, most, uh, most frequently, it's a, a psychometrist or a psychologist that would be interested in the standard error of measurement, or at least they more frequently apply it. But uh, anyone who's using tools to make measurements should be interested in the standard error of measurement. What is its purpose? The standard error of measurement, in addition to giving us an estimate of the standard deviation of errors, allows us to quantify the extent to which a test provides accurate scores. So low levels of standard error of measurement indicate high levels of score accuracy, and conversely, high levels of standard error of measurement indicate low levels of score accuracy. So take an example of an IQ score of 96. If you obtain that IQ score, you might want to ask, how confident am I that the person's true IQ score is 96? If there's a certain amount of error associated with the tool that's being used to estimate the IQ score, then there will be a range of scores under which the true score will fall. And SEM allows us to estimate that precisely. So how is it estimated? We use a very basic formula. It's the standard deviation of the sample scores multiplied by the square root of 1 minus the reliability of scores. Now that sounds like a mouthful, but this is the form formula. It's simply the standard deviation of scores. So let's say IQ scores. What's the standard deviation? And then we multiply that by the square root of 1 minus the reliability of those scores. So how is it applied? Uh, we use the SEM to calculate confidence intervals around obtained scores. And there are probably three typical confidence intervals that we estimate. It's the 68 percent uh, confidence intervals, which is simply the obtained score plus or minus the standard error of uh, measurement. 95% confidence intervals, which is probably most frequently applied in practice. So it's the score plus or minus the product of 1.96 and the standard error of measurement. Now this 1.96 corresponds to the uh, Z distribution point at which 95% uh, of scores fall under that. And then 99% confidence interval. A score plus or minus 2.58 times standard error of measurement. So as you increase your confidence levels, as in you increase the range, you also have a corresponding larger Z value that you're multiplying the standard error of measurement. Now it might look like for the 68th uh, percent confidence interval that you're not multiplying the standard error measurement by something, but you are. You're multiplying it by one. I, don't, I didn't add it in this formula, but that's what it means. The standard deviation of um, errors in measurement uh, corresponds to a z-score of one, and we know that one z-score of one above and beyond the mean, below the mean, corresponds to 68 percent of those values in the normal distribution. So I'm assuming that you know what the normal distribution is and that uh, what a standard deviation is in this presentation. Let's look at an example. Consider an IQ test uh, with a standard deviation of 15. In fact, most IQ, uh, IQ tests are designed in such a way to have a uh, standard deviation of 15. So this is a very um, real example. Uh, let's quantify the standard error of measurement for an IQ score of 100 under three different conditions. Reliability equal to 0 0.70 reliability equal to 0 0.80, and reliability of 0 0.90. Now, 
I find this particularly useful because a lot of people argue that a reliability, or they cite, that a reliability of 0 0.70 is sufficient reliability. It's a sufficiently acceptable uh, level of reliability. And I think using the standard error of uh, measurement uh, in terms of the confidence intervals, you probably won't share that view anymore.